David Fisdale, Dave McMenamin. Let's get, guys, to the ongoing James Harden saga. According to Ramona Shelburne and Adrian Wojnarowski, James is still seeking a trade. Sources tell them John Wall's arrival has left Harden unmoved and uninterested in pursuing a new partnership, and the franchise star continues to push the Rockets for a deal. So let's look at a recent timeline of the drama here. December 1st, Harden did not report to Rockets training camp. A couple days later, he posted pictures at rapper Lil Baby's birthday party, breaking the NBA's COVID protocol by being without a mask, then hopping to Las Vegas on the day the Rockets expected him to come in for his first workout. On December 8th, Harden finally did report to Rockets training camp. He had to, of course, enter the COVID protocol, so he was required to get six straight negative tests. Today, he is expected to finally clear that, rejoin the team. Here is Coach Steven Silas today. We talk basketball, and you know I'm a basketball coach, and he's a basketball player, and we we talked hoop today. Uh, so as far as his commitment to what we're doing basketball wise, he was right there. Uh, as far as the rumors and all the other stuff, I can't speak to. Um, again, that's another question that you'll have to have for him. As far as it as a distraction, really hasn't been that much of a distraction. I mean, it's been something that the media has been talking about quite a bit. And I've had to answer a lot of questions about, but uh, as far as our growth and our kind of pushing forward this season, um, we've kind of been right on pace. And now adding him and, and PJ to the mix just makes it better. And so uh, I see it as a positive. So, Coach, we've been talking all week all right. about Steven Silas's professionalism here. Awesome. It is a lot for a first-time coach to be juggling. Mm -hmm. But there's more ahead for him because ownership and the front office – want James to be convinced to stay. So is there anything Coach Silas can do to help with that? Well, I think he's handling it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like, he's keeping it about basketball. He has nothing to do with contracts and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's doing the right a team can really succeed. Mm -hmm. The only thing I think that can keep James there is if he joins the team right now and plays with them and he likes what's going on. Right. If he really, really likes the locker room, the coaching staff, and the progression of where they're going to end up. Otherwise, damn, they offered him $103 million <laughs> for two years, and that didn't convince him to stay over $50 million a year. I mean, so if that doesn't do it, right. I don't know what other options they have left. So, you know, hopefully the team can galvanize around them, but $103 million over two years, if that don't move you, I don't know what will. <laughs> Well, I, I don't blame James Harden for being in the position he's in. They got rid of Mike D'Antoni. They got rid of Daryl Morey. They traded away Robert Covington. And all of a sudden, this championship window that he was reveling in for a couple of seasons seemingly has closed. And now he wears that MVP trophy that he won like an anvil around his neck. Because we know that for better or for worse, in this league, it's about the ring. And unless you are winning championships, all your individual accolades ring hollow. And so certainly he must feel that pressure of we need to legit legitimize what I've done so far individually with a championship. And if I have a friend playing in Brooklyn and I see an easy window to potentially join up on, on a team that can get me that ring, there's desire there. But now it comes down to if, if that's not going to happen and the Rockets have dug their feet in, you got to be professional because you're getting paid quite handsomely uh -huh. to go uh, play basketball. And, and you are great at playing basketball. And so report to camp. It sounds like he had a good practice today. And certainly kudos to Steven Silas because what a tough situation that he's put in as a first-time head coach. Uh, I'm sure it is a distraction. He hasn't been able to implement what he wanted to do in his first week of training camp as a head coach. But to air out those grievances is not going to help him in the long run mm -hmm. should they be able to mend fences and have him and James Harden continuing their partnership together. It really is tricky from a basketball standpoint, though, because one of the things that we all said coming into this training camp, once we knew John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins were going to be there, is, wow, if James changes the way he plays, this could really work. If John Wall is really healthy and James adjusts, 
Well, now they're in the position. He is finally coming into camp and practices with them. Right. But they're trying to convince him to feel good about this team. I don't know how much then Coach Silas can tell him, by the way, also completely change your style of play because I don't want this team built around you anymore. And if you look at the other guys now, John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins, the way they've been playing, they have looked good in preseason action. Wall posted 13 points, 9 assists, followed by 21 points, 4 assists. Boogie Cousins scored in double figures in both games. So, Dave, how dangerous can this combo of former Kentucky stars be for the Rockets, especially once James is back in the mix? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a positive that they have those two guys coming in that aren't just strangers to one another. They have that pre-existing uh, relationship going back to even before they played at Kentucky together. And uh, certainly they both are trying to, uh, you know, uh, recollect that superstar status that they had mm -hmm. not that long ago. Uh, but I, I, I don't, that to me creates an interesting dynamic because we've seen locker rooms with clicks. Like they have a natural rapport. Yep. And the guy who has owned that locker room and owned that franchise, who has his face plastered on the side of the Toyota Center for the last several years, is now the outsider in a way because he hasn't been there. You know, it's kind of what have you done for me lately in this league? And right now, they are the Rockets playing and he is the outsider. So, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, you know, I, I think basketball can work itself out sometimes if they have uh, a couple good games together and, and he mm -hmm. recognizes that, hey, maybe this is something that I shouldn't overlook. There's something here. At the same time, again, it's not Kyrie and Kevin Durant. It's not <laughs> Joel Embiid and his old boss, Daryl Morey. And so I can see why uh, he would be cold to jumping right into this new relationship. Yeah, but I still see more talent than he's ever had on the team there right now. Mm. And I think, you know, because if ever? Boogie... Yeah, I think so. When you look okay. at the totality, Boogie Cousins, at a point in this league, was one the best big, yeah. right? Hands down, he was 26 and 13 or whatever. I mean, he was putting up extreme numbers. John Wall was one of the top point guards in this league. And so when you add that to a James Harden, and I don't think Coach Silas is asking him to, to hand over the whole team and have to adjust his whole game in some kind of way. I think what he's going to show him is this is how these guys can really help you and take the load off of you so when we get deeper into this thing, you got the legs and you got the trust built in that can get you over the hump later on. These two guys are really trying to rebrand themselves right now. I think it's a great opportunity for Wall and Boogie to reestablish themselves. And if it doesn't work out with James and they move him, they're going to get something good back to add to that team. So I think the Rockets can be a really good basketball team. I don't know how good, but they can end up being a solid basketball team in the West. Well, it's no secret. These are two players who I particularly like watching play basketball. Ooh. I just like both of their games so much. And I hope that they can get back to those gentlemen that you were describing. We don't right. know if they're going to be that yet. And I wouldn't want to put that pressure on them, frankly, because we've seen with Gordon Hayward, Paul George, it takes a little while to come back from such a major injury. But yeah, if you're James Harden, I would hope you would get excited about this and this duo. Because here's the thing. If the Rockets do trade him, he does not get to say where he goes. Mm -hmm. James is their ticket to getting back some of their future if they are forced to deal him. They are going to make a trade to the best organization for them, for their deal. And so I hope he realizes what he has in these two right now and at least gives it a try. We will see. All right, guys, coming up, Taylor Horton Tucker opened the eyes of a lot of fans. A couple big games against the Clippers over the weekend. How much has the Lakers' depth improved from last season? Stick around. You're watching The Jump. I'm getting greedy. I blow the whole budget on me. That's on me. I'm conceited. Treaty. Nah, that ain't how we treat it. This right here sound like a three-peat. I put the tip in it. The team can really succeed. Mm -hmm. The only thing I think that can keep James there is if he joins the team right now and plays with them and he likes what's going on. Right. If he really, really likes the locker room, the coaching staff, and the progression of where they're going to end up. Otherwise, damn, they offered him $103 million <laughs> for two years, and that didn't convince him to stay over $50 million a year. I mean, so if that doesn't do it, right. I don't know what other options they have left. So, you know, hopefully the team can galvanize around them, but... $103 million over two years. If that don't move you, I don't know what will. <laughs> well, I, I don't blame James Harden for being in position he's in. They got rid of Mike Tantoni. They got rid of Daryl Morey. 
They traded away Robert Covington, and all of a sudden, this championship window that he was reveling in for a couple of seasons seemingly has closed, and now he wears that MVP trophy that he won like an anvil around his neck because we know that for better or for worse, in this league, it's about the ring, and unless you are winning championships, all your individual accolades ring hollow, and so certainly he must feel that pressure of we need to legit legitimize what I've done so far individually with the championship. And if I have a friend playing in Brooklyn and I see an easy window to potentially join up on, on a team that can get me that ring, there's desire there. But now it comes down to if, if that's not going to happen and the Rockets have dug their feet in, you got to be professional because you're getting paid quite handsomely uh -huh. to go uh, play basketball. And, and you are great at playing basketball. And so report to camp. It sounds like he had a good practice.